Greetings and salutations, I'm Keb, you're you, this is XCOM Terror from the Deep, the second game in the whole XCOM franchise. It was released in 1995, barely a year after the first XCOM, because the publisher really wanted a sequel ASAP, and the developer basically had to tell them, if we don't have time to develop, we can't do much more than a reskin of the game, and the publisher said, yeah, sure, go ahead, and that's what XCOM uh, Terror from the Deep is. It's pretty much just a reskin of the first game. The gameplay is largely, largely the same, the interface is pretty much the same, the base building pretty much the same. There are a few tweaks here and there, and we'll get to them eventually, I suppose, but yeah, it's going to feel very familiar if you play the first XCOM game, except perhaps the difficulty, because uh, the first XCOM had some um, bugs in it that made the whole game, I think, default to beginner status, something like that. Uh, I don't think that applies to the... Um, versions available on uh, Steam or or um, good old games, but uh, yeah, there were some things there. And also, Terror from the Deep is inherently more difficult because of the whole underwater mechanics and everything, and also because the enemies are slightly tougher. Uh, but again, we'll get to that eventually. Let's just start the game uh, and start the fantastic intro cinematic. <laughs> uh, let's see the fate of, fate of the Hyperion, shall we? You'll see, you know what I mean in a second. Jake. Anyways, why, why the hell they have a uh, Titanic replica running the seas in 2040? I don't know, but you know, <laughs> let's ignore the inconsistency, shall we? Anyways, the XCOM Terror from the Deep takes up the story from the first XCOM where you defeat the aliens in 2015, 2016. I think the game first game was that to do. I don't quite recall now, actually. Either way, uh, you pick up the pick up the pace, uh, pick up the uh, storyline there, um, and now it's 2040. And the aliens are apparently back for more. More correctly, they've just activated their fallback position. <laughs> they were defeated on Mars, and unfortunately for us, they had a little a secret hiding out in the deep oceans. And that's basically what the, this whole game is about. Um, as I said, the difficulty in this game, at least to me, feels harder than the first one. I don't know if it actually is. I, I must admit that, I don't know if it actually is. So that's why I'm a bit hesitant to go on veteran, but because I'm probably gonna get my teeth kicked in, but you know, that's kind of fun too, I suppose. Where do we set our first base though? I mean, there are a couple of good options, there are new sponsors. Uh, Europe is very much different, for example, in terms of sponsorships. Uh, there are a couple of new ones too. Alaska, for example, is now a separate sponsor from the United States, that sort of thing. Uh, if I recall correctly, there were a handful of good starting locations. You could start in the Caribbean and protect the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Brazil. 
you can start over in the Mediterranean and protect the various European fractions and some of the uh, North, some of North Africa. You can start in the Persian Gulf and protect uh, the Indian sponsor, which is also, I think, the second richest sponsor. I think that's the case, I don't quite recall. Or you can be in the Sea of Japan or Sea of Korea, somewhere over here. And there are a whole bunch of sponsors over there as well. That's what I recall. You have to remember, you still want to protect the la sponsors on land, though nearly all the combat will happen at sea. <laughs> so it, the, the base construction is a bit different from the first game, where you pretty much just protect the land, and if you shot down a UFO over the ocean, that UFO was lost. Uh, that's uh, no longer possible, because you cannot shoot down a UFO over land. You can only shoot down UFOs in the seas. But you know, I do think we want to settle somewhere in the in the Mexican Gulf. Or the Caribbean. Um, for our first base, I think we're gonna go... Eeny, meeny, miny. There? Yeah, sure. That's it. Seems fine. Deep water. Let's go with that. Um... As for our base, uh, I'm sure some of you know this already. Uh, aliens, when they invade your bases, on the rare chances, on the rare uh, occurrences, where they do, they will only enter through subpens or airlocks. So if you design your base so that you have all the subpens and all the airlocks on one side, you're going to be that much more uh, able to defend because they have only attack from one side, right? Uh, so long term, we want to have these two subpens up here, and we want to dismantle the living quarters the rest of the base down there. The problem with this is that there's a bug. Um, when you dismantle a facility and you, if you do not build something on those empty squares, you're gonna pay maintenance on those empty squares and that maintenance is something like half a million for each square some, or, or $250,000 a month. It's an outrageously high cost and it's an insanely infuriating bug. Uh, and it is present. I play I'm in this game, uh, in this uh, version of the game. I'm playing the good old games version of the game. And that bug is certainly present. I've, I've tested it already. Uh, and so you have to be a bit careful when, 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 with when I delete the subpens. But we want to start that process anyways. That's going to cost a fair bit anyway. But uh, we want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to build there. There, there we go. As for all the facilities, we're gonna need an alien containment facility. Um, we're gonna need a new radar station. Let's see, I wanna delete this one. Eventually. Yeah, well, it's fine. It's gonna take a long time before I'm able to delete anything anyways. Um, I want that. We do need more living quarters. Uh, we are gonna need more general storage units. Hmm. I won't be able to have enough personnel to staff more laboratories and workshops. Let's yeah, do just a general store. I think that's gonna be okay initially. Um, blah, blah, blah. What else? We need to uh, staff our stuff up our base. I think we start with eight Aquanauts, that's nowhere near enough. Right, eight. Yeah, we're gonna need at least 20. Because uh, we're gonna have a lot of casualties in the early game. That's probably what makes this part that much harder than the first XCOM, because you cannot get um, the your first armor set, the first actual armor, until you had a terror mission. Because you need one of the aliens from the terror missions in uh, Terror from the Deep. Unlike the first XCOM, you just need to salvage any kind of UFO. And that's uh, <laughs> that's a rather a significant change. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to have a lot of soldiers die, unfortunately. Uh, but that's life. Um, other than that, I probably want to change the makeup of our soldiers, because I do believe... Oh yeah, there we go, UFOpedia. Because we have another choice to make. Um, usually when I play XCOM, I, I, I'm, I absolutely adore the auto shot, which is basically automatic fire. 
so you want rifles to just spray and pray, right? And I love that in the first XCOM because of the laser rifle, which has no ammunition requirements. So you can just fire it at will and not worry too much about it. And as long as you hit something, that's fine. Even though all the, accu the shots have terrible accuracy and most of them will miss. I, that's why I prefer auto shot for so much, especially in the early game of XCOMs. I want to try something different because I believe... The other winning strategy in XCOM, and probably what most people actually do, is use the gas cannons. They don't have water shots, so instead you have snapshots, which, which have higher accuracy, but they also do a hell of a lot more damage. 32 versus 60. So they're gonna mm, remain good for some time. Uh, but these, th these things are very heavy, and that's kind of the big drawback. So your initial soldiers won't really be able to carry them around. Or at least they won't be able to carry them far. But you know, well, let's do that. Let's let's try. I want to try that and see if that works. Usually I would just go with the jet harpoons and just fire off shots willy-nilly. But we're going to try to play around with, ga with gas cannons. I think we start with two. Actually, I don't know. Uh, can I check equip submarine? And bear with me, please, because it's been a long time since I've played, so I'm trying to remember what the hell we actually start out. We start with, with two, yeah, so I'm going to need to have at least another ten of those, and of course we're going to need a hell of a lot more armor-piercing bolts. Um, the hydrojet cannons, I really don't like those, especially because those, along with the torpedo launcher, are ocean-only, which means you can't use them in terror missions and stuff like that. Grenades... I usually do bring grenades, even though I'm, I almost never use them, because I'm terrible at using grenades. Uh, unlike the other XCOMs, you have to time the grenade, you prime them first, and that's where I really fail. Uh, it always happens like this, I prime the grenade for zero turns, and then I realize I don't have enough turns to throw the thing, time units left, to throw the grenade away. Which means that the grenade will blow up in your soldier's hand, and that's usually not a good idea. That's why I'm a bit <laughs> reluctant to actually use the grenades, even though I almost always bring them. i just blown up my own soldiers one time too many. But yeah, anyways, let's buy the uh, gas grenades, or the, the, um, the gas cannons, and see if we can uh, play ball with those. I do think we're gonna just bring the armor piercing rounds. I don't think. I don't recall at the moment which aliens would uh, suffer more from the high explosive ones. Not the earlier ones, right? Again, it's been ages since I played this game. I mean, we played the XCOM, the first XCOM, some like two years ago or something now. 2020. I don't need that many, but I'm gonna. I want, I want some few extras, regardless. Not those grenades. You know, come to think of it, the uh, proximity grenades might actually be better for me in the way I play, but. Uh, I don't know. I mean, using those at the um, UFO entrances could be kind of cool. Provided, of course, you can get the alien to emerge, which is uh, not that on, not that uh, not that easy. Anyways, let's do this. Um, chemical flares. You know, what? I'm not gonna use the chemical flares. I'm not gonna use the die grenades. For a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to try to avoid playing on night missions whenever possible. So I want to try to make it make it so that we don't need the chemical flares. As for the die grenades, they're useful, but unlike, say, the modern XCOMs, the cloud, the, the, the uh, dispersion cloud, needs time to take effect. So you can't like uh, walk into the open, find the alien, and decide I need to cover. You can't use the die grenade like that because it's going to take like two or three turns before the die grenade actually unfolds its uh, cover. So you can only use them if you're in a kind of a planned assault, and that's something I am terrible at. As for the Barracudas, I'm kind of tempted to just change them all into depleted uranium pellet 
launchers rather than the Ajax launchers. I mean, they're more expensive. Oh, right. Oh, the whole storage space. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have to sell some equipment as well. But okay, fine. We'll buy this stuff first, and we'll see how things go. Um, as for equipment, I'm gonna hold off on doing anything there until we've gotten the first shipment of the gas cannons. Anyways, I expect there to be a lot of death. I'm just gonna say that right now. Uh, again, I am no expert on this game. So things tend to go uh, horribly wrong very, very quickly. Okay, let's see. We've got our, got our base equipment now. Let's start equipping the submarines. We, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, how to do this? I need you to have these things. I need to sell all the dart guns. I need to sell the jet harpoons and the clips. Uh, we need to bring along <laughs> enough ammunition. Uh, why can't I transfer a single one back? That's kind of annoying. Uh, buy grenades. Wait, come to think of it, the sub will have 14 soldiers on it. At least eventually. Hmm. Anyways, let's sell some of the equipment we aren't going to use. Let's free up some space on the base. We won't use the dart guns. Away they go. I'm gonna get rid of the hydrojets, don't want that. There we go. I'm gonna sell the uh, high explosive bolt as well, just in case. Um, let's sell that one. And let's buy more of these. Get more ammo. Did I buy the launchers? <laughs> I think I bought the launchers. Uh, I have the memory of Agnat. Uh, there we go. Actually, I could do go, go and check that, couldn't I have transfers? Yeah. Staff is coming in, scientists are coming in, we're getting two launchers, yeah, okay, fine. That is fine. I don't think I have enough equipment to actually swap these out right now. Wait, don't I have a single... I have no launchers at all. Uh, okay, uh, never mind. Gotta, gotta wait for the first two launchers to arrive and then we'll deal with things then. Okay, back to scanning. It's been like three days, which means uh, we should already be able to see which see the aliens target first. They are in the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic especially, okay. Bit in the South Pacific. Bit in the Caribbean. They aren't tar Ooh. This is curious. They've, they've spread their activity in quite a few areas. Quite a few areas, but they're definitely hitting the Africa core, which I believe is South Africa. Yeah, okay, so their main activity seems to be down here. Um, and slightly over here as well. Uh, that means a couple of things. First of all, we won't see that many UFOs initially, but we should see some. Activity isn't like a, at a dead still here. Okay, we got those. Oh, you know, I completely forgot to set research. Oh my word. Uh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Oh. Completely slipped my mind. We lost like, what, six days of research? Oh, four days of research. Not the end of the world. But that's kind of annoying. Oh well. So be it. 
Yeah, we're gonna start with ghost rifles because uh, medikits won't matter until we actually have some armor. <laughs> Your soldiers want to survive a hit, so the medikits are kind of useless. And the particle disturbance sensors, well, they're nice, but I'd much rather have the better guns first. So, got this much. Uh, do I have something I can produce? No, nothing. Uh, did I get the uh, launchers? I did. Okay, let's switch you out. And let's sell sack some of the ship equipment we won't need. Like the two launchers there. The extra gas cannon things. Uh, say like 20 of those torpedoes. Okay, sell that. Equip the submarine with the two extra guns that we bought. Fourteen, right? Yeah, it's fourteen. There we go. Oh, they all have a gun. Good for them. And we need to buy two more launchers and more duphead torpedoes. We can have storage space in a, more storage space in a couple of days. Okay, that means we can refit the other submarine. Dopeds are kind of expensive in terms of downing a UFO. You're gonna launch all six torpedoes, pretty much, on all the UFOs. And uh, that is a lot of money. But it is, it is also probably the most efficient way of actually downing the UFO early on. Which is why we're doing that, but basically we're paying at least uh, 9 times 6. Ugh, mathematics. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're paying a lot of money down the UFOs, basically. It's expensive. But also kind of useful. useful. I mean, a down the UFO is money in the bank as well, as long as you can clear it. Wait, did I have a spare? Did I buy one too many? I bought. Yeah, right, we had one already, didn't we? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not gonna sell it. We're gonna have more UFO. Uh, yeah, more subs later on, anyways. Mm -hmm. And I want to buy a few more torpedoes, and then I think we're good. There we go. Not enough storage space. Yeah, yeah. Running low on funds too because I'm spending way more money than I should probably. But yeah, gonna be fine. Got our first ghost pistol. Uh, I'm not gonna build those though. Don't really like the ghost pistols. They're not that. Great. Uh, I can't actually see how much damage the ghost stuffs do until we actually build the rifle clips as well on the clips as well. So, anyways, we're gonna go straight into the rifles, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now I'm getting kind of worried. Still not seeing a single UFO. Despite them being very active in the Caribbean. Huh. So they are flying across the Caribbean, but I'm not detecting the UFOs. Do I want to use one of these for scouting duties? I mean, let's do that. Let's just send one of the subs out. Because that's going to extend our radar range a little bit, or sonar range, whatever, with that problem. Unfortunately, they can't really be out there for long. Hey, there we go. 
first UFO. So let's see. Let's just double up, uh, double check the uh, crew roster and everything. We have 14 soldiers, all the equipment, the gas cannons ready. We do bring grenades, though I'm probably not going to use them. I know myself too well for that. Uh, it was a tiny little UFO, right? Unfortunately, it's in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do a night mission. And it's a down UFO. Uh, oh, it's a touchdown UFO rather than one to be shot down. Hmm. I'll see what we do, but that'll have to be next episode. It's time for a quick break. Thank you for watching. See you next episode.